Hi everyone, it is March 12, 2019. I have some crazy news for you. Let's start with Teresa. Oh, Teresa, Teresa, Teresa. UK plunged into chaos. Brexit deadlock still. Oh my God, when is this Brexit ever going to end? The wretched soap opera of Brexit continues as the country heads back to square one. Wow. Oh boy. Brexit deal crushed by MPs again, meaning we're no nearer to quitting EU after 993 days. Do you think you're being played here? Do you really think that Britain is going to be exiting the EU? I don't think so. House of Commons tonight voted against the PM's Brexit deal for the second time by a margin of 391 votes to 242. Yes, the Brexit stands still. But I came across this video here. Let's just see what these women have to say. Happy International Women's Day, everybody. I hope everyone's having a lovely, wholesome, unhealthy day. Um, and yeah, just we're literally boss ladies. So let's just carry on how we are being bosses. And um, yeah, let's rule the world together. You're putting so much pressure on women to be perfect and I mean what is perfect it's not until I got into this industry that you realize the hours and time that goes into looking nice for like one hour being perhaps on a red carpet for an award ceremony it's mad if you have a normal nine to five you're not going to be able to have a glam squad every day so that's why I'm so pleased to be part of this campaign it just shows a real stripped back version we're all doing unedited pictures and I think it's really healthy for girls to see that I'm supporting Avon stand for her program Okay, I didn't know we had an international, so international Women's Day. Oh boy, can't people see through all of this? The social engineering of the people, the feminists, the, you know, this, um, oh God. Why can't people just be? Why can't we just be? Let's just be, you know? We're human beings. B. God, feds arrest dozens, including actresses and ex PIMCO CEO in largest college admission scam ever prosecuted. Oh my God. Um, Felicity Huffman obviously got some work done on her face because she no longer really looks like Felicity Huffman. Um, you know, you know you're getting old when you just don't know who is who in the world of fame. But check this out. Federal prosecutors announced that they were charging dozens of people, including famous actresses Felicity Huffman and Lori uh, Laughlin, I don't know, in an alleged scheme to help students, no, to help their children get admitted to colleges under false pretenses on Tuesday. They are being charged with conspiracy. Oh my God. Conspiracy? Conspiracies don't exist. Oh, they do. Right. Okay. Uh, conspiracy to commit mail fraud. 38 people have reportedly been arrested thus far. Prosecutors are alleging that the individuals charged tried to bribe college entrance exam officials in order to cheat on admissions tests and that some conspired to bribe coaches and administrators to label their children as recruited athletes. Athletes sometimes get preferential treatment. Oh, money talks. How demeaning all this is to the children of people like Felicity Huffman and her husband, what's his name? Uh, we'll get to that. Colleges involved, Georgetown University, Yale University, Stanford University, University of California, Los Angeles, uh, charitable organizations were used as fronts for the bribery payments. According to authorities, a Newport Beach College counseling business, the Edge College and Career Network, was named as the main 
facilitator in the bribes. There were more than six million dollars in bribes. Wow. Lori Laughlin and her husband agreed to pay bribes totaling 500000 in exchange for having their two daughters designated as recruits to the USC crew team. I guess, you know, the idea of, you know, working hard to achieve your goal, for a whole lot of people, I, I guess they just feel fine paying just I have no substance in me so I'm going to pay you a lot of money to have the facade of substance because I have a lot of money and then there's so many people who will line up to take the money what a sick sick country we live in yeah so it was alleged that Hoffman's Hoffman's daughter was able to cheat on her SATs as a result of the payments. Listen to this. Huffman had the site where her daughter took the SATs, moved from her own high school to a test center in West Hollywood. I guess having money, boy, you can do an awful lot. Uh, her test was then administered by a proctor who had flown in from Tampa and told investigators that he facilitated cheating either by correcting the student's answers after the test or by actively assisting the student during the exam. In this case, Huffman's daughter scored a 1420, which was a 400-point improvement since the last time she took the SATs, beginning in or about. 2011, so this has been going on for a long time, uh, and continuing through the present, the defendants, principally individuals whose high school age children were applying to college, conspired with others to use bribery and other forms of fraud to facilitate their children's admissions to colleges and universities in the District of Massachusetts and elsewhere including Yale University, Stanford, University of Texas, University of Southern California, University of Southern California, Los Angeles. Oh, can't remember this guy's name. Mommy and Daddy paid to get us into college because we didn't have but other people have, you know, when they have to work hard to get those grades, we didn't have it. So mommy and daddy, they have a lot of money. Oh my God. Boston authorities called the bus, the largest college admissions scam ever prosecuted by the Department of Justice. CEOs, successful securities and real estate investors, two well-known actresses, a famous fashion designer and a co-chairman of a global law firm were all involved in this scam, in this crime. Uh, the head soccer coach of Yale allegedly accepted 400000 for accepting a recruit who didn't even play soccer. <laughs> oh, God. Yeah, well, uh, success is a big show. It's a big show. It's all about the externals. Felicity. That's why you got a facelift. Touch ups. Uh, it's all about the externals. What about inside? Oh, well, forget about it. Medieval diseases running rampant through California's homeless population. Okay, diseases rise to an increase in the homeless population. In major cities in the U.S., we hear about increasing numbers of encampments and people living in squalor. Those conditions are ideal for an increase in vermin like rats. Fleas on rats are key to the spread of typhus. Typhus outbreak recently led to the closing of City Hall in Los Angeles amid concerns of rats in the building. And amid concerns. They're not saying rats were in the building. 
but let's close down City Hall because rats are in the building. There are rats in many, many buildings, but oh, well, we're drama queens. And then we're going to claim that there's a typhus outbreak, outbreak and then we're going to blame the homeless population. Uh, danger is not limited to typhus. This is a new disease, a rare uh, diarrhea disease called Shingella, spread by feces, and with trench fever spread by body lice. It's a public health disaster, Seattle. This is a health officer firm, Seattle. Squalid conditions are cited as the root cause of disease outbreaks. You have constant activity that serves as a breeding ground for rats. Well, activity actually does not serve as a breeding ground for rats. Activity uh, generally scatters rats, but illegally dumping, food being discarded, accumulation of blankets and pillows and human waste is creating third world conditions. Homeless populations increase and the amount of garbage that's available on the street is increasing. The ability to transmit all this other stuff also increases. The hygiene situation is just horrendous for people living on the streets. It becomes just a, like a third world environment uh, where their human feces contaminate the areas where they are eating and sleeping. Great article, Jack Davis. Fabulous. Uh, why don't they, in the areas where a lot of homeless are, why don't they just put up some porta potties? Cheap and, uh, yeah, uh, a good way to cut down on the human feces that are contaminating the areas. And how about we really look at the conditions that lead to homelessness? Oh, well, no. I find this uh, extremely demeaning of the homeless. And, you know, because of these kinds of articles, the homeless now... I could foresee them getting attacked more regularly um, instead of helped they'll be spit on they'll be attacked they'll be we'll we'll see more of this blaming the homeless for disease outbreaks and don't we live in the richest country in the world? Well, our government is certainly rich, but the American people are becoming less and less rich. Uh, there's no reason for the third world conditions. Why do we have third world conditions? Well, greed, homelessness, people can't afford rent anymore. People getting laid out, uh, laid off from work and can't find other jobs. Yeah, drugs, alcohol. Um, families that don't give a shit about family members. Porta potties would clean up the human feces that they are claiming that the homeless people, I guess, are just shitting, you know, where they are living, shitting on the streets. Really? Don't think so. Um, but, yeah, I mean, if you're homeless and you're looking rather disheveled, can you find a bathroom? Will businesses let you use their bathrooms? Probably not. Are there any public uh, toilets around? I know in New York, when I was still living, when I lived there, and this was decades ago, there were little signs in the windows of 
like restaurants that said only those paying customers can use bathrooms. It was very hard for the homeless population in New York to find a bathroom. Well, yeah, um, I guess we all have to come together as a society and uh, take care of one another and deal with these problems. Um, you know, the greedy landlords need to be shamed out of town. Oh boy, well, anyway, let's just get on. Let's move on. Let's move on to the next crazy. Come on, computer. Come on, charter. That's my provider. Thank you. Oh, what is this? Yeah. Court rules father cannot halt daughter's transgender hormones or even call her a girl. Canada, British Columbia. Last Wednesday, the Supreme Court of British Columbia ruled that a 14-year-old girl may undergo transgender hormone treatments to support her transgender identity as a boy without her father's consent. Oh, nothing like the law. Government coming in and taking away your, your parental authority. How does this happen? The people in the nations let it happen. The court went so far as to threaten to penalize, penalize the father's speech. Well, you got those laws passed in Canada. Oh, it's a criminal offense if you call someone a he when that he would rather be called a she. And this is what happens. So, um, if he calls his daughter a girl, that would constitute family violence, which would be punishable by law. And Murdoch News Corps calls for Google breakup. Do you think it's going to happen? Rupert Murdoch's News Corps has called for Google to be broken up in Australia. Wouldn't it be fabulous to be breaking it up everywhere? Uh, the latest salvo in a battle between the corporate media giants in a petition in a petition to Australian regulators, News Corps, local sub <laughs> subsidiary, complained that Google enjoys overwhelming market power in both online search and ad tech services. Going a step further, the company accuses Google of abusing its dominant position to the detriment of consumers, advertisers, advertisers, and publishers. Earlier this week, U.S. presidential hopeful, hopeful, ugh, and former federal consumer watchdog, Elizabeth Warren, became the latest in a line of commentators to argue that firms such as Amazon, Google, and Facebook hold too much power in society. They've been holding that power for years and years and years, so why are you just now coming out, Lizzie? And speaking about it, oh, could that be because you're running for the presidency? Who are these people? I mean, we've, we, tr it's like, Susie down the road wants to become the president, so she's thrown her hat into the ring and she's going to become a candidate. You know, these people, who are these people? They're nobody. They're like nothing, nobody. Oh. Elizabeth Warren as the president of the United States, as the CEO of the U.S. corporation. Yeah, that's going to get us far. Cattle and sheep know now. Man, are any of you experiencing just reading like you it's hard? Okay. Cattle and sheep now herded by barking drones. Barking drones. 
Well, it appears robots aren't just stealing human jobs, but they're after man's best friend too. That's right, there's now a drone that can bark like a sheepdog. This latest development comes as more and more farmers start using drone technology for work on the farm. Our rural reporter, Maya Burry, and video journalist, Simon Rogers, have the story. Now, if you're listening to this, this is one that you will need to go back and watch online a little later. in the hills of a North Canterbury farm, a drone is being put through its paces, shifting sheep to greener pastures. Corey Lambeth has been a shepherd on this sheep and beef farm, which backs on to the Wyo River, for about three years. It's a job that involves moving stock, as well as checking water and feed levels, work that Mr Lambeth says his drone has made more efficient. Winter time it's ideal for checking like flying up, sitting at home on a cold day, I don't want to go outside so I fly my drone around, have a look, make sure all the stock are behind the wire when we're stuck brake fencing. Also in the, when we're lambing we can fly it around, it's ideal for the zoom, going in, right in, looking at it, not even disturbing the ewes and lambs. The latest drone model, the DJI Mavic Enterprise, which comes with a $3,500 price tag, is able to record sounds and then play them out over a speaker. This means a dog's bark, or anything else for that matter. now be loudly projected across a paddock. Mr Lambeth says this helps move stock along faster during mustering while still putting less stress on the animals than a dog can. Well, that, that's why Definitely a lot faster. Did you see these sheep go? All right, I think that was sped up, but sheep dogs, time to retire you. All right, hundreds flock to a frozen lake in Michigan to see an underwater 11-foot marble crucifix with Jesus on that is visible for the first time. Hmm. Not very well written. Okay, what is this? What is this? Hundreds of people traveled to the small northern Michigan town of Petoskey for the chance of catching a glimpse of a rare sight a life-size statue of Jesus Christ on the cross submerged in Lake Michigan. Ooh. Okay. Well. You can watch the video. Uh, ooh. Wow. Okay. Not only was he crucified, but drowned in Lake Michigan. Alrighty. Yeah, a whole lot coming out onto the, well, hopefully frozen lake to see Jesus, who is apparently, I don't know how many feet below in this freezing water, 150, 151 feet below maximum depth. Colossal crucifix features a five- was he the short? Five foot, five inch sculpture of Christ on the cross. It is believed to be the only statue of its kind in the world that is submerged in fresh water. Well, oh, that stands to reason. Um, so it's located about 1,200 feet from the shore at the bottom of Little Traverse Bay. And the story of how the statue got there is as fascinating and tragic as the spectacle itself. According to Inside Edition, the crucifix was made in Italy, commissioned by the family of a 15-year-old boy who died in a farm accident near Bad Axe, Bad Axe, Michigan, in 1956. This, I guess, is, this is where he is. Jesus is in that water. Maybe that's how he's going to return. Maybe he's going to... I can't say anything else because I already get crucified by Christians. So, um, alrighty. Well, (laughs) 
That looks really eerie. Very eerie. The unnamed family received word that the statue had been damaged and demanded a new one. The one they discarded was later purchased by a local diving club member who had it placed at the bottom of Lake Michigan in remembrance of a diver who drowned in nearby Torch Lake, Michigan. Uh, since then, the statue has become a shrine to honor those who have died on the water or in the water. The first public viewing of the idol was was took place. Ooh, who the hell are writing these things? AI, this, oh, I guess they just got rid of all of their, um, all of their fact checkers and um, their, oh Jesus, I can't remember the term. One that reads through text to make sure that everything is okay. All right, I'm losing my mind. Um, so some guy from the Detroit Free Press said, you can see when they look down in there and when you talk to them and they don't answer you, it's a special time for these people. It's an emotional thing for a lot of people. I think it's, it's just eerie looking. Well, Georgia State Representative <laughs> drafting testicular, a testicular bill of rights in response to heartbeat abortion ban. Oh, man. It's true. Georgia House Committee approved legislation last week to outlaw abortion after a fetus heartbeat can be detected, which is before many women know they are pregnant. Women in Georgia can currently seek an abortion within the first 20 weeks of pregnancy. A heartbeat is generally detected by medical profession professionals around six weeks, so that would bring the 20-week uh, legislation, well, it would knock out 14 weeks. Um, the heartbeat bill inspired me to see what the reaction would be from some males and male legislators if the tables were turned and we started to talk about their reproductive rights and organs. That's right. Please have the following legislation drafted. Require men to obtain permission from their sex partner before they are able to obtain a prescription for Viagra or any erectile dysfunction medication. You know, any woman who could equate what this, uh, what this woman, you know, and all of these things, you know, ban, vestectomy, we're talking, we are talking about a life. We are talking about a life. We're not talking about Viagra. Um, can't get into it. You know, I, I'm just, the idiocy is just too much. New study claims Dr. Seuss and his books are racist. His work included overwhelming white characters. Study published this month entitled, The Cat is Out of the Bag, Orientalism, Anti-Blackness, and White Supremacy in Dr. Seuss's Children's Books. <sighs> the late author's works, dehumanizing and degrading to black, indigenous, and people of color, and people from other marginalized groups like Jewish people and Muslims, largely because non-white characters were illustrated in stereotypical fashion, they argued, uh, claimed the books include white savior heroes as well as dehumanized characters of color. The study found Seuss, whose real name was Theodore Seuss Geisel, published anti-black anti-Semitic cartoons and sexist depictions of women. Well, it may be only a matter of time before reading works like The Cat in the Hat and The Sneetches to Children is no longer acceptable. Okay, I don't, I never had Dr. Seuss books. I don't know. I haven't read any of them.
So, for those of you who have and may have read it to your children, did you pick up on Dr. Seuss as a white supremacist? Most sinful states in America. Most sinful states that it's amazing how they come up with this stuff. All right, uh, South Carolina ranks 19. And it, they use drug use and uh, gambling um, and other factors. Anger and hatred. Anger and hatred. Jealousy. Excessive excesses and vices, greed, lust, um, <laughs> okay, tell me, how did they rank states for jealousy? Did they talk to every resident of the states and find out if they were jealous or not? These studies are really, uh, well, anger and hatred. Maybe they got that from the crimes, the hate crimes that I guess they could get some documentation. But who is judging the crime as hate? You know, there is way too much, uh, way too many factors that conflate these studies and it's just ridiculous, but it's kind of fun. Florida, you rank number two. Whoa, man, you're up there. California, three. Arizona, 10. New Mexico, 11. Texas, four. Louisiana, six. It's probably because you have that. New Orleans, New Orleans, and you're Mardi Gras. Um, Illinois, eight. Michigan, nine. Maine, you're almost the least sinful state, 49. And Vermont, 50. That's because you have such a small population and well, do you have any conservatives in Vermont? Tennessee, five. Georgia, seven. Ohio, 14. Well, that was fun, wasn't it? Washington, 20. Oregon, 32. Um, and just lastly, universities host workshops teaching basic adult skills. Finally, finally, we'll have workshops for adults and they can learn adult skills like self-care for the mind, building and maintaining credit, um, adulting 101. All those things that you should have learned long before college, now you get to learn them in college. Have we become an infantilized population? Oh yeah, we have. Balling on the budget. Yeah, teach these kids how to budget their money. Uh, hello? Any parents? Did Are these all test tube babies? Like lab babies they didn't have parents but we do have to grow up all links are below and I sure hope that you're all maintaining your sanity in a life in a world that has become utterly insane ciao